You've probably heard statements like these. The pilot is experiencing a force of 7 Gs or gravitational forces. Or the acceleration force was 9 Gs or perhaps even more. Indeed, you yourself regularly experience stressful forces in everyday life. Well, that is not only emotional, but also physical. How do G-forces affect a person on Earth? How are they felt in space and even at faster than light speeds? Let's try to answer these questions. To begin with, as always, you should understand what G-forces are and how they occur. From the definition, it follows that a g-force is the ratio of the absolute value of linear acceleration caused by non-gravitational forces to the standard acceleration of free fall at the surface of the Earth. Being the ratio of two accelerations, g-force is a dimensionless value, but is often stated in units of the standard acceleration of free fall, g or gravity, which is 9.8 tenth of a meter per second squared. This represents how many times greater the force of inertia is in relation to the usual force of gravity acting upon a body under conditions of the Earth at sea level. And the more abrupt the maneuver, the stronger the g-force. The fact is, the human body is able to tolerate accelerations of higher than 9 g's for brief durations, but very few are capable of enduring them for more protracted periods of time. If it's only for brief moments, we humans can handle much higher g-forces without suffering serious injury. The record for enduring momentarily high g-forces belongs to Eli Beating, who rolled backwards on a special rocket-powered sled in 1958 and literally took a force of 82.6 g's in the chest when the sled accelerated to 55 km per hour in one-tenth of a second. Beating lost consciousness, but got away with only small bruises on his back, demonstrating the incredible capabilities of the body. John Ivanovich Gridunov, an equipment tester for the Soviet space program, was also involved in numerous experiments that verified the limits of the human body. They even called him the ground-based astronaut. While testing a pressure suit, he underwent a number of experiments in a high-altitude pressure chamber, including uncontrolled decompression. During a simulated emergency landing, he experienced an impact force of 50 Gs, as well as having withstood a force of 19 Gs in the region of thoracic spine on a centrifuge. Even the Orion spacecraft won't be able to deliver our full velocity potential. But let's glance into the distant future, when spaceships will be able to travel extremely fast, thousands of times faster than with today's technology. Let's remember that light travels at a speed of 300,000 kilometers per second. Consequently, if we assume that we will be able to overcome known technological limitations and build hyperspeed spacecraft, our delicate bodies, made mostly of water, will have to contend with the new risks that will result from such high-speed travel. If humans do acquire the ability to travel faster than light, the potential dangers that may be encountered are the discovery of a mind-boggling paradigm or the detection of wormholes in the current physical state. Even if we begin speeding up to 40,000 km per hour, the acceleration should be gradual. After all, it is specifically acceleration that affects the magnitude of the g-force. Hypothetically, you can speed a ship with a person aboard up to the speed of light. Let's just try to ignore the laws of physics here and make believe. But the question is not with the terminal velocity or final speed, but in how quickly it gathers that speed. If in a year our passenger remains safe at a speed of 1 km per second, even with a moderate increase in acceleration, that person won't have enough of his average life expectancy left to do it. If by chance he did achieve such a speed, contrary to all the laws of physics, he should feel no worse than he would being in an airplane. Having said that, if the acceleration from zero to speed of light took just a second, well, that'd be better not to imagine. Rapid acceleration and deceleration can be fatal for a human. Bodily injuries during road accidents 
occur during the process of the sudden drop in speed from tens of kilometers per hour to zero in a fraction of a second. It's all about the property of the universe known as inertia, as a result of which an object with mass resists change to its state of motion. Newton's first law of motion states that an object at rest remains at rest, and an object in motion remains in motion at the same speed and in the same direction until external forces have an effect upon it. If G-forces don't pose a problem for long-term expeditions on those same Orion spacecrafts, then the problem with small space rocks, micrometeorites, is more complicated. These particles, the harmless size of a grain of rice, can accelerate to impressive and thereby destructive speeds. Micrometeorites will not be the only obstacle to future space missions when people are accelerating to high velocities. During a mission to Mars, for example, other particle issues will have to be addressed, including the issues of feeding the crew and how to increase the life expectancy of its members as a consequence of radiation exposure. In any case, humans definitely love speed. Since the wheel was invented and speed was no longer determined by the strength of our legs, we wanted to move faster and faster. Thus far, mankind has managed to develop incredibly fast planes, supersonic ultra-fast high-speed trains, and so on. However, for us people, the universe still has many obstacles that will surely be overcome by intellectual curiosity and ingenuity.